Alrighty. Another video, just for the sake of video. I don't know what's the purpose of this video. Uh, maybe to showcase this bag that I made, perhaps. All right, let's just start with the intro. Is this natural? No, it's not natural. Let me come over here. Guys, I don't know what I'm doing. My phone is, this is bad. Hold on guys, I'm trying to, I'm really, this is really unprofessional. Hey guys, hey guys, it's Alexis, uh, Sophie Leather. Thanks for stopping by. And this video is just simply me going over this bag that I just finished. I call this the executive tote bag. A little bit about this bag. This is all, um, it's called colored Lamport shoulder from Metropolitan Leather. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, one thing about ordering their leather, if you're in the US, they're, they're in the UK. But if you're in the US, they used to be able to take payment uh, over their website and do the exchange from British pounds to whatever, and it was kind of seamless. I think they got away from that, and it was kind of a pain in the butt to pay them. So I'm not really familiar uh, with paying overseas, paying for anything overseas, so they sent me an invoice, right? And on the invoice, it said, pay direct to this bank, some IBP number. It looked like a scam to me. It wasn't, it was just, uh, something that I was not used to. So I had to transfer money, wire money from my bank account to that number. It was, yeah, maybe there's a different way. I don't know, maybe a representative from Metropolitan Leather could get a hold of me. That's another thing, trying to get a hold of those guys was a little bit of a, a hassle. And I think it has something to do with um, them being short staffed. I don't know, uh, 100%, but just keep that in mind when you order and you're from the US, it's a little tricky. I figured it out, not a big deal. Moving forward is gonna be easy peasy. So yeah, so that's that leather. Let me check my, oh, that was, uh, that's that. Um, yeah, so this leather is their dark tan uh, from the Lamport color shoulder. And a little bit about the construction of the bag is very similar to my briefcase build with the exception that there is no flap. Uh, there is no storm flap and no shoulder strap. Instead, there's two small shoulder straps. That's the only difference, really. Other than that, everything's the same, the dimensions, the crew dimensions, uh, except the width of the gusset. The gusset on this bag, since it's a tote bag, uh, it is going to be a little bit wider, maybe one inch wider. I think it's a total of five inches. You can make that however you want, scale it up and down. But if you guys are interested in on learning how to make something like this, I don't have the blueprints for it, however, I did make one of these, a six part series right here. You can watch it here. As well as I did make a how to make my briefcase with downloadable templates, uh, a, a downloadable blueprint and template. And like I said, it's the same build minus the sword flap, minus the sword flap. And you just put the D-rings on top of the face. We'll go over that here in a second. But uh, yeah, just another excuse to make a video, to be honest with you. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go zoom into the bag and show you some of the key features, uh, the construction, and why I did what I did. And if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to address them. So you, as you guys can see, if you go through my YouTube channel, you'll notice that I might be shooting myself in the foot here. But I typically try to answer all questions as honestly as possible. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but I do. So if you guys have a question, feel free to put them down there and then I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. God bless you. Let's change the camera and show you some of this bag. Mm. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, it is really hot in here. Uh, I can see the screen. Anyway, all right, so this right here is a little card holder I made to go with, to go with the bag. Nothing fancy. Um, this is three and a half inches wide by four inches deep with a little slit there, a little relief cut to be able to get to the cards. Now this is flat 2D, there's no gusset on this. This will allow for a good healthy amount of business cards or even regular um, debit cards or whatever. Um, it's not meant to, be, to easily get to your cards, it's just a, a place to hold your business cards. And I think that's a nice little touch. This took me 30 minutes to make, so nothing fancy there. This bag here, 
This is the front. Now this could be universal, right? This could be the front or this could be the front. Now I call this my executive tote bag because this is a professional working bag. This is for sales, um, uh, people in the sales industry, um, people that are gonna use something like this uh, every day. You have a big pocket in here that has room for plenty of, you could probably fit two, three inch binders in there. Um, it's just a working tote bag. It's not flimsy, it stands on its own, right? And here's a problem with a lot of bags like this is that they end up falling over. Now you notice I made these shoulder straps just, just shy of the floor. It's not touching the ground here. So you can lay this down and those straps are not gonna hit the ground for san sanitary reasons. So this bag is gonna stay standing like this at all times. The only thing that's gonna touch the floor or the seat or anything is gonna be the bottom of the bag. That's the only thing that's gonna touch the bottom. All right, so these shoulder straps are just long enough to fit your shoulder and just short enough to not touch the floor. So that was a, that's a pretty unique design. Now the face, this could be the front or the back. This is nothing, of course you can, you can make this whatever you want. You can attach whatever pockets you want here. Uh, this is just empty. And on the opposite side of this, on the inside, you have a laptop sleeve, okay? So there is a laptop sleeve that goes right there, okay? That's real simple. Now the other side, this is just a flap here. Now this is lock, this locking system is called the locks system, L-O-X-X. -X. And it's pretty neat because it's, it's not a snap. It's this little ball and hitch kind of a system here. I'll give you a close up here in a second. But this system here, it's, it locks. You have to lift up this little nipple here to release the ball. So I like that system. This is just one big pocket. You can put whatever you want in there. If you lock it, the, the interesting thing of this, it's not intended for this, but my wife does this. If you lock this, you essentially have two pockets now over here. And what my wife does is that she puts her phone like that. Um, it bothers me that she does that, but it works. So like anything else, you're gonna make it functional for you. Uh, but that's what she does. That's how she carries her phone there. Um, this is a nine inch pocket. That's the same depth as the laptop sleeve. This laptop sleeve is nine inches deep. Okay, so let me grab a laptop and show you what that looks like inside there. Um, this laptop sleeve goes all the way out to the end of the gusset, meaning that that laptop sleeve is indeed 16 inches wide. So that's a true 16 inches wide, that laptop sleeve. By the way, this bag is 16 inches wide by 12 inches tall. So that's what that laptop looks like inside there. It goes all the way out and there's still room. You could, like I said, this 16 inches wide, this laptop sleeve, so it will fit uh, a 16 inch laptop or 15 inch laptop. Let's take that out because I don't want it to mold. I want to give it to the customer nice and beautiful, and pristine and perfect and leather sounding. Watch, let's get my mic and do it. You hear that? Look. I don't know what, I just wasted your time. All right, um, uh, on the sides I, I uh, added these little D-rings here and that could be used for whatever. I incorporated this little, I am sweating bad. I incorpor Let me show you the sweat that's beating down my forehead. You see it, it's right here. You see the drop? I'm doing it for you. I'm sacrificing for you. Um, I incorporated this little keychain, a simple little keychain if it wants to focus. Come on, focus, man. Yeah. I know everything I build is a little robust and a little bit gaudy, uh, but that's just the way I do things. Okay, so there's a D-ring here as well as a D-ring here on this side. He wasn't sure what side, so I gave him both sides. Really simple. Um, one thing I wanted to show you was uh, on this side here where I have this little pocket on the reverse side of that, there is a hanging pocket, okay? You can't see it, can you? There is a hanging pocket. Can you see that hanging pocket? This hanging pocket, can you see it? You can't see it. There's a hanging 
Is it? Is it? Oh, man. Anyway, there's a hanging pocket in there. Can you see the hanging pocket? That hanging pocket is 10 inches wide by 10 inches deep. It's like a big square, but it's a zipper, okay? There's a, it's a really robust zipper right here. And what the hanging pocket does is allow the expansion of that pocket without compromising the bulk of this body. If you were to just put a laptop sleeve there, if you start to stuff it, it'll start to bow out on the body versus taking up the space inside the cavity of the bag individually independent of the main body. So that's the reason why I made a hanging pocket, plus it's easier to attach. That hanging pocket I, I created separately and then I, I attached it and I incorporated it with these D-rings right here. All right, I don't know if you can see that. See how that is simply I incorporated that in there. So that's an individual, I made that hanging pocket individually and just incorporated uh, that pocket with those D-rings <clears throat> to hold it, rendering it loose, it's loose. So the only thing that's holding together are those two rivets there, that one and that one, uh, and it's just hanging there, okay? Uh, one more thing I want to share about this bag is the, inset all right so in all fairness i'm going to be honest with you 100 percent transparency i ran out of this color and i'm like man i don't have any color that matches this so i decided to go with a dark brown now what this does is it matches the color of the stitch all right so this stitch since i'm talking about it this stitch is ritza tiger thread 0.8 millimeter thread and it's a medium brown color this leather is uh, Wicked and Craig, they're a uh, new Latigo in medium brown, which looks like a dark brown, very similar to the stitch. And anyway, this is just a base, all right? And what this is gonna do is gonna protect the bottom of the bag. That just slips in there. That's gonna protect the bottom of the bag from uh, any punctures or any, whenever the customer throws anything in there, uh, that base is gonna take the, the, the brunt uh, as well as giving it some kind of structure. Because what happens over time, it happened to my wife's first bag. If you don't have anything in there, um, this gusset's all five ounces, all right? This gusset's five ounces. It's pretty stout, but over time it starts to get supple and the bottom of this bag uh, will start to cavitate on itself. And the gusset gets really smooth and nice and patinas and gets oily and uh, it starts to get really loose. And without that base, it's gonna to wanna to bow and flex the bottom of the bag. So that base, that inset is gonna add some structure. I do that on all my bags now um, be, for that reason. Uh, number one, it protects the bag itself, the bottom of the bag from pens, uh, the, the corners of books, whatever, uh, protects the bottom of the bag as well as giving it some structure. So yeah, there's that, that's my bag. Um, I'm gonna change cameras and do a little outro. And I'm sweating. I gotta end this. Hold on, I gotta change it over here a little bit. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. Wow, it is hot in here, guys. All right, so that's it for this video. It's a quick video. I just wanted to go over and showcase this, this bag that I made for a customer that really wanted it. About the pricing and about selling these bags, I really don't sell too many for one reason, one reason only, is that this bag took me about 20 to 25 hours to build. It's all done by hand. There was nothing that plugged in the wall in order for me to make this. It's all done by hand, all traditional uh, hand work. And because of that, it takes a while, primarily the stitching and the gusset. Stitching that gusset is a beast. Um, so because of that, if I wanna charge 30 bucks an hour, plus material, you're looking at close to $1,000. So it's a really hard sell. I haven't really tried to sell it. So I understand that it's a, it's a big ticket item and it may not be worth it to some people, but for some people, that's a good price. That's just the way it goes. So I really don't sell these unless somebody really, really, really wants one. And this customer really, really wanted it. I warned them, dude, I wanna make at least 30 bucks an hour, somewhere around there. It takes me 20, 30 hours to make it and the material is about 200 bucks. And he was like, oh, uh, somewhere around 1,000. I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, no problem. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll make it, no problem. Um, so that's that. That's the reason why I don't sell too many of these. 
Um, the other thing too about uh, this bag, if I were to spend 20 hours making firefighter leather, I'd make way more than a thousand. So it just, I can't justify me single-handedly focusing on these bags, but that's just me. I'm sure somebody else can make it work, but for me, it's a passion project. Um, yeah, but that's it for the bag. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, some of you guys may ask what, I, what did I do here with my arrangement, and I'm gonna show you what I did. So I'm gonna move the camera, and I'm gonna show you my, my new garage, all right? All right, stand by. Alrighty. So if anybody is interested on what I, what I have here, you let me know and I'll make a video on it, even though this has nothing to do with leather. This is my new workout place. I have dumbbells all the way to 50s right over there. I have a brand new bench and a brand new squat rack there from Rep Fitness. Uh, this is a squat, uh, squat rack 4000, I think they call it. Um, a Ohio power bar and some bumpers all the way up to 45s back there. And I installed the horse floor mats down here. I got this from uh, Tractor Supply. I put some Gorilla Tape on the seams to keep it from collecting dust in between the cracks as well as to keeping them in place because they move a little bit. And this is my new little workout spot here. Um, it doesn't look like a workout, but I promise you, Ow. Well, that was, that was dumb. But yeah, that's all. That's what I did here. That's just a little bonus. If you guys want to know more about it, look it up, all right? I'm not a workout YouTube channel. God bless you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.